Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. Can I? All right, everyone's awake then. Yeah, some of you were finding coffee, right? No, 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 no need coffee. Hopefully, the slides will wake you up. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Isaac. Okay, and uh, so today's event, uh, we're gonna be. It's going to be fun, all right? It's not going to be a lecture where it's one way, okay? So I'm going to be like a plant, okay? So plants uh, survive by photosynthesis, right? So you will be like the sun ray, okay? The more sunlight you give to me, the more energetic I become, okay? So it'll be two-way, all right? So don't worry, it's not like your lecture back in your university or at your workplace, okay? It'll be, um, there'll be some hands-on application as well, okay? So along the way, I'll give you some treats as well, okay? Some of you have not eaten breakfast, right? I'll give you some treats, okay? Now. I represent uh, an association called My Trees, okay? Malaysia Trees Innovation Association. That's where I, I come from. And uh, above all, we represent trees, lah, okay? So we are the Malaysian chapter of the International Trees Association. And uh, I understand that some of you are here because uh, it's part of your competition journey, right? So we hope to, to perhaps give you some tool to help you in your competition, okay? Now, before we begin, that's a brief introduction about myself. I'd just like to know a little bit more about you guys, all right? Now, what do you see on the screen over here? You see, how many shapes are there? Five, right? It's so simple that you are already questioning, <laughs> is this a trick question? Okay, so there's five shapes over here. So uh, these shapes, okay, you look at these shapes, and then I want you to decide. Don't tell your friends yet, just decide um, in your own heart, just decide, okay, which shape do you like the most? You have five shapes on the screen, just decide for yourself, which shape do you like the most, okay? The first shape that you that pops up in your mind, okay, okay, okay. Now, each of these shapes represents different types of personalities. So, at the different venues that I go, I would like to to know more. So, what type of crowd am I speaking to? Then I'll tailor tailor fit the whole presentation to your own style, okay. So now let's take a look. Who chose the first shape, which is the square? Square. Can I just see you, your hand? Okay, you got one. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, who chose circle? Wow, so many. Thank you, thank you, too. Okay, uh, triangle. All right, we got one, two, three. Thanks. Okay, uh, rectangular. One, two. Okay, thank you. And finally, the squiggly line. Wow, okay, thank you. As much as the circle ones. Okay, now, each of these shapes represents different personality. Now, cannot change your idea. So now I'll explain to you what does it mean. All right, for those, uh, for those that chose square, you are a methodical guy, okay? When you do, when you're given a task, you like to know the rules and regulations. Okay, you like to stay within the boundary, and you're very systematic. You like systems. You don't like surprises too much. Okay, you like to to be in control. Okay, those who are in square, who who chose square, and those who chose circle, um, you are people person. So I'm I'm glad that actually half of you guys here today chose circle. So you're a very friendly person. Okay, given a task in a group assignment, yes, the task is important, but you will also uh, taking into consideration the feelings of your teammates. Okay, so you're, you're more of a, of a peacemaker. You go for the democratic decision. Okay? Um, for those who choose triangle, we have three, right? Okay, uh, three are natural born leaders. Okay? When given a task, okay, when given your assignment, right, you'll be among the first to take lead. Okay? You'll be the one reading the rules and regulation. You'll be the one gathering the people, setting up the meeting schedules and whatnot. Okay, you're naturally a leader. Okay, uh, those who choose rectangular, okay, those who choose rectangular, uh, can I see your hand again? Uh, rectangular, all right. Those who choose rectangular, normally you're, um, you're a person who do not settle in the comfort zone. You're always curious, you know, about your current position and you always wonder what's next, okay? And usually also those who choose rectangular are those who are more, uh, more fashionable. They always try to look up what's the latest trend, what's the latest fashion. Okay, now, finally, squiggly line, last uh, wave again. Confirm, huh? cannot change your idea. Huh? Okay, no regrets, huh? okay. Those who choose squiggly line, um, you are crazy. Because <laughs> the question asked was this, pick a shape, all right? Actually, a line is not a shape, okay? But anyway, those who choose line, you are creatively crazy, okay? These are risk takers. When they see something that is new, okay, they would, Take the risk. They'll go all in to try it out. Okay, and um, today I have with me is Enghu. Enghu is the co-founder of My Trees as well. So when Enghu and I we go around around the country when we give such talks, right? We recognize that actually a lot of CEOs and top management and even some ministers uh, they choose squiggly line. So they are also as crazy as you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for you guys to to spend your Saturday morning, wake up so early and come here, yeah, you guys are a little bit. Off. 
But anyway, that's uh, that's just uh, some fun activity. Sorry. Oh, me. Good question. You see, I'm I'm a round shape, right? So I choose round. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm a I'm a round person. So I, I like to engage with with people, right? Uh, because instead of focusing on innovation, our interest is the innovators. Yeah. So I I'm a people person. Yeah. As if you forget, just look at my shape. Yeah, I'm round. Okay. So this is just an overview. I'll just give you some um, some nuggets. Okay. Uh, don't give you too much or not you will have constipation. So just some nuggets. Now, in setting up a business or finding an opportunity, it's all about these three steps. It's all about finding the right problem to solve first. Okay? Which is more important, find, doing things right or doing, things, uh, doing the right thing or doing things right? Both are important, but you need to do the right thing first. Then you do it right. Okay? For example, let's say you have the task of traveling to Singapore. Okay, so you are supposed to drive to Singapore and then, okay, what you need to do first is to identify, okay, which direction is Singapore, all right? So because if you just take care of your car, you just make sure that you have a full tank of petrol, you, bought, you brought along your passport, you do everything right, okay? But then you head up north, you head up north, will you reach Singapore? No, but you're doing the right thing, you're driving, you are doing things right, sorry, you're doing things right, you're, you're cycling or you're driving, yeah? and you're making sure your car is working well, you know, it, it's efficient. But will you reach Singapore? No. Yeah, because you did not do the right thing in the first place. Okay, so first things first, you need to choose the right problem to solve. Secondly, you need to do, solve it correctly. Okay, and finally, I'll just share with you that actually innovations have different stages, have different levels. Not all innovations are of the same level. Okay, now, uh, this guy over here, who's this guy? Over here. Uh, he is Albert Einstein, okay? Now, um, he says this, is that no problem can be solved by the same level of consciousness that created it. Now, this morning as you wake up, right? As you wake up, you, you see that your bed is so messy, right? Is it easier to mess up your bed or is it easier to clean up your bed? Easier to mess up your bed, all right? So it's easier to be a problem or a troublemaker than it is to be a, a solution provider, correct or not? Yeah? So same as his hair, so you see, uh, it's, it's easier to mess up the hair than it is to comb the hair. One day, um, Henry Ford yeah, was uh, having, having a session with the reporters, and he asked his reporters this, okay? If I were to ask my customers what they want, what would they say? What would they say? Okay. Sorry? A faster horse. A faster horse. Okay. A faster horse. But most of, of the people over here, you might wonder, say that, okay, maybe they want a cheaper, uh, they want to have uh, something like a cheaper car, right? Or a more powerful car. What the participant has said is correct, a faster horse, because back those days is the early 20th century, okay? People do not use cars, okay? People use horse carriages, okay? So, they would naturally ask for a faster horse, or a horse that don't eat so much, okay? That can do more work but don't eat so much, okay? More horsepower, right? But he saw the opportunity that he wants to make the car so affordable that an, and that an average uh, income earner can buy a car. So did he invent the car? No, he didn't invent the car. But he came up with the innovative way of manufacturing the car to make it at, at an affordable price. So his contribution, to the automotive industry is this, an affordable car. Okay, that's, no, it's just a play of words between foreign and affordable. Uh, some of you are still sleeping, so it's okay. Okay, now, um, why do we have jobs? Why do we have businesses? It's because jobs and businesses are there to solve problems. You are problem solvers, be it you are, you are working with a company, a bit you are a business person, okay? You're there to solve a problem. So imagine this, let's say you graduate from your university and then you enter your first job and then your boss plays you, say, okay, well done, you got uh, first class honours, huh? okay, very smart, huh? so I'll put you alone in the middle of the maze and your job, should you choose to solve it, is this, you're supposed to find the exit sign, the color sign, all right? So you have to find the exit sign, all right? Find the way out. So will you be able to find a way out if you're not given ways not given any um, GPS devices. Yes, eventually, through trial and error. So you turn left, you turn right, you turn left, turn right, and eventually you'll find the exit. 
exit way. So at the exit way, your manager stands there, your boss stands there and says, oh, well done, pats you on the back and say that. Well, very good, huh? you can find the exit point. So, okay, I'll reward you, okay? I, I'll, I'll put you as a manager now of a team. So he places you in the center of the maze again, but this time you're in charge of five people. Now, will you be able to find the exit point at a faster rate? Yeah. Depends. If it's the same maze, perhaps yes, because you are familiar with the, with the corners already. Okay? But if it's a new maze, no, not necessarily you'll find the exit point at a faster pace because the method that you have used is trial and error. It's not repeatable. Okay? You depend on that eureka moment. Okay? You become like a one-hit wonder. So the thing is this, when you talk about innovation as well, it's not about finding just one innovation. Yeah. Um, for example, like Intel, they are number one in the world, right? Number one uh, semiconductor company in the world. But it is one thing to be number one for a year, and another thing, totally another thing to be number one for the past 40 years. Okay? You always have to solve a new maze. Okay? Always ha have to solve a new maze. If you are a specialist in one maze, okay, then you become just like a one-trick pony. Yeah? But these days, the world is not demanding specialists, for specialists. We have to be generalist. Yeah? Now, so what we need to have is this. It's, it's a system, an innovative system, which is systematic. Okay? You need to have steps. You cannot just rely on try and error. You, you must be able to predict that you will find the exit way, yeah? the exit path. You must be able to repeat it as well. Not only for yourself, but for your team as well. Okay? So we need a methodology for this. Now, um, in the industry, it is very common to see this ratio where you have 3,000 raw ideas, and then after that, 300 uh, prototypes and one product in the market. For every product that you see now, you know, in this room, in your possession, they have come from a distillation of 3,000 ideas. Okay? So the thing is this, you know, then um, the efficiency is not that great, isn't it? You know? Do we need a lot of resources or lesser resources if we depend on this model? More resources. And that is why not every company can afford to, to do research and development. Because is it cheap or expensive? It's expensive, yeah? So as, as a nation, a, a developing nation in fact, uh, can we rely on this model where we just, okay, let's just uh, run the lab and have a lot of experiments and one day we will get it, yeah? Before you can even get that one success in the market you wouldn't have run out of resources already. Okay? So the, the key question is this, can we improve this efficiency? Let's say one to one. Every idea that you generate will be a success in the market. Is it possible? Now let's step, take a step further. One idea, like the chicken egg, and then you win. Okay? So is it possible? Yeah? So, we are here to share with you a proven methodology that have been used by Forbes 500 companies yeah, since the 1990s. Yeah? And in Malaysia, we are trying to proliferate this methodology uh, among Malaysian companies and also Malaysian universities. So TRIS is actually not a word. Okay? It's not a word. It's actually a record, uh, an acronym. T-R-I-Z. Acronym. In Russia, translate in Russian, and if you tr were to translate it into English, it stands for Theory of Inventive Problem Solving. So the rest of the world would know this uh, methodology as trees, uh, except in America. In America, they call it TIPS. Okay? So if you were to Google up, if you were to do a quick search, yeah, you will find a lot of material on trees. So trees originated from Russia, and this is the founding father of trees, Altshuler. Okay. What happened is this, Altshuler, he was a brilliant kid. All right? Um, he came up with his first invention when he was in his teenage years. And it was a breathing apparatus, how to breathe uh, underwater without carrying the heavy oxygen tank. Yeah? So at, at a very young age, he came up with an invention. But he didn't stop there. Yeah? He didn't want to be a one-hit wonder. He wanted to carry on. And he was figuring, okay, is there a better way to invent? Is there a proper way to invent? So where did he go? In? This is back in the 1920s, 1930s. Huh? So he didn't have Google back then. All right. So where did he go? He go to the library, he go to the bookshops, and then he asked the uh, librarians, and they asked, do you have any books that will teach me how to invent? They all look at him funny. They say that. Well, um, that's a strange question. It's either you're born a creative person, an inventor, or you're not. 
Okay, either you're born with it or not. But he wanted to challenge that. He said no. He believed that creativity can be taught. So along the years, what happened is that he ended up working in a patent office. Uh, you know what is a patent? A patent is the certificate for invention so that you have the rights to commercialize your product. Right? So he worked in the patent office and his job was to look through applications and to consider, okay, um, is this application worthy of a patent? Right? A patent certificate. So over the years, he discovered that, hey, out of 200,000 patents, he realized 40,000 of patents are truly innovative. The rest are just minor iterations. And out of these 40,000 patents, he, there are three trends, three key discoveries he made. Okay? The first is this, that problems and sol solutions repeat across industries. He realized out of the 40,000 innovative patents that they follow certain principles. He quantified and he coded them, and he called them the 40 inventive principles. So in other words, talk, when you talk about solutions, right, there's not an infinite amount of solutions anymore. There are only 40 ways, 40 principles that represent all patents. This is back in the 1940s. 200,000 patents have been studied. Up to today, the TRIS committee has studied close to 3 million patents. The World Database has about 10 million patents. Okay? And up to today, we still could not find the 41st principle. All right? So maybe at, at the end of this talk, someone uh, would, would figure out the 41st principle. Okay? We'll be famous together. <laughs> together okay? Now, the thing is this. If you were to do an exam, to, to sit for an exam, right? which type of uh, exam would you go for? Objective based or subjective based? Can I see a show of hand? Uh, objective based question. Who you like? Who, who would like to sit for that? Oh, only one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, subjective based? Wow, so many. Okay. Okay. Uh, the lecturers are here. I remember. So, <laughs> the, uh, we give them uh, subjective questions. Now, well, why would you like subjective question? Anyone would like to share? Sorry. Anybody? Just a quick shot. Sorry. Partial credit, as in you get credit for your idea, is it? Ah, okay, okay. Well, which shape do you choose this one? <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, very, very creative answer. <laughs> okay, so he likes to take ownership of his idea. Okay, that's good, because objective questions, you only have A, B, C, D, all right? Now, in real life problem, right, it's not as simple as objective question, correct? It's open problem. We are not clo solving closed problems. We are solving open problems. But then again, you know, would it be nice if you have a cheat sheet or a guideline? Now imagine this. Instead of needing to have trial and error, because by having a subjective question, yes, you can take ownership. Uh, but if it's wrong, it's also your, <laughs> your own idea. If it's right, yes, great. But if it's wrong, it's totally your own idea as well. So the thing is this. If we want to solve a problem that we have never solved before, we have not learned before, we have not seen before, would it be nice if we at least have some guidelines? So the thing is this, with these 40 inventive principles, you need not look at every patent that's out there or every other uh, marketed products that are out, out there. You just need to look at these 40 principles. So in other words, instead of A, B, C, D, you got a, uh, one out of 40 chance of getting it right. Okay? Now, second key discovery he made is this, that things will evolve according to certain patterns. Okay? Um, one of the... the the trends of evolution for systems is this, is that miniaturization. Yeah? Things will be smaller, all right? Things will become smaller. Now, when Steve Jobs was still alive, he, when he promoted the iPad, he said that, oh, okay, this iPad size, okay, is the perfect size. It fits nicely in your hand. Just slightly smaller than an A4 paper. It's perfect. We will not follow Samsung, okay? We will not follow Samsung. Yeah? They have so many sizes, okay? But what happens to the iPad then after that, after he passes away? You have the iPad mini, okay? So the thing that Al Schiller realizes this is that products will follow these trends irregardless of the geographical location, irregardless of the inventor, irregardless of the inventor's background as well, okay? Things, products, systems, services will naturally evolve according to certain patterns. So in other words, why is this important? Then we can predict the future. Then we can predict the future. What will how would your product evolve in the next stage? Okay, so that is the key thing. Right. Next, he realized that innovation lies in other domains of practices, other domains of sciences. 
All right? For example, if you want to solve a me mechanical issue, your problem might, be, might have been solved in the biological field. Okay? So it's this cross-hibernation of solutions that will come up with higher level of innovation. Now, for example, like durian. All right? uh, some people like uh, the kampong durian, all right? the original kampong durian. Uh, some like uh, certain types of breeds of durian. Okay? And then we have the D24, which is uh, a mixture of different types of durians. So innovation is like this. It's like you're, you're trying to marry, you're trying to um, pollinate okay? the best traits of different trees, of different species. Right? So that is what we are trying to do. We try to identify what are the best practices of another industry and use it in our own industry. So with all of this, then we have a framework now that shows that trees is a roadmap. Okay? Uh, some of you had some difficulty coming to, to the venue here, right? Like Waze showed you to a different place, uh, Google Maps showed you a different place. Yeah? So how about innovation then? You know, do we need a roadmap even more so? Okay? Because it's, an, it's like an invisible target. Yeah? So we need that roadmap. Now with trees, what you can have is that you need not rely on your intuition. Okay? You need not rely, oh, today I must have my cup of coffee from so-and-so cafe or not, I will not be able to function. No, it is based on logic and data. It's not based on the person. Okay? So then you will not be influenced by other factors that are not within your control. Okay? So in other words, trees is like a toolbox. It's a map, but it also has tools. Okay? So we have various tools to solve different types of problems. Now, imagine this. So this is a very general overview, a new universal overview on how problem solving is. Most of the time, we are given the task to go from specific problem to specific solution. Yeah? If we know how to do it, fine, then there's no issue. There's no contradiction. It's all about applying your knowledge, applying your experience. So, but most of the time, we will see that there's a gap. Okay? There's a gap between specific problem and specific solution. So what trees does is this. It acts as a bridge. Okay? Instead of you trying to jump from one end to the other end, you know, if you can manage to jump uh, far enough, yes, you will survive. But if you don't manage to jump far enough, you will go down. All right? So the thing is this. Why don't you use the bridge? Trees is there to, pro to generalize the problem that you have. Now, you always hear the term, think out of the box, think out of the box. It's actually about abstracting your problem. Okay? You need to generalize your problem. Don't be having psychological inertia. Okay? You need to generalize the problem. And from the general problem, you, trees will also provide a general solution. Hey, other people from different industry have applied these principles, so perhaps you can apply that in your situation as well. But it doesn't mean that with trees, you, you will lose your job. You know, it's not that. Okay? Because you will be actively engaged in this stage between general solutions and specific solutions. Trees is there just to recommend a guideline, but it's up to your own uh, experience, initiative, and uh, as you say, your own credit okay? to come up with your own ideas, to come up with the specific solutions. Now, I'll give you an analogy to describe this. It is like this. You're given a mathematical equation to solve. Yeah? So this is an algebraic equation. Okay? Uh, I hear some, some sighs already. Some people, oh no, I thought we've seen the last of this in high school. It's back. Okay, so for those who did additional maths, uh, this is an algebraic equation. So it's all about finding x. Finding x, finding the exit point. Now you are finding x. Okay, what's the value of x? Now imagine if you are to, to find x and we, are, we do not have any formula. Will we be able to find the value of x? Specific value. Yes, can by doing a lot of calculations, iterative, hundreds of thousands. Yeah? You need to calculate and calculate and calculate. Eventually, yes, you'll get that. But well, is it fast or slow? Slow, very slow. Uses a lot of resources. So, trees acts as this. Okay, you have a specific problem. Okay, let's identify what type of algebraic equation it is. Okay, this is a quadratic equation. So with quadratic equation, we just use the, over here, quadratic formula. Okay, so, it provides a general solution, the formula. And you just plug in your specific data, okay, your specific values of your variables, and you will get your specific solutions. Now, trees also will recommend multiple solutions. As you can see, x equals to negative 3.85 or x equals to negative 0.15. It is up to your own discretion as well. You need to use your own uh, judgment to decide which solutions 
best suit your scenario. Okay? So it's all about the formula of creativity. So no, no other methods will teach you a formula on how to be innovative. Okay? So this is what we are trying to share. Uh, this is the philosophy in trees. Uh, Altrilla mentions someone, some, somewhere, not over the rainbow, uh, has solved this or something that is very similar to it. Okay? Your problem is actually not unique. Someone already has solved it. So yeah, why don't take a peek at their success stories? Now, okay, we'll have some hands-on activity already. Okay? Now, what I would like you all to do is that I would like, I would like you all to work in groups of three. Okay? Groups of three. Yeah, decide for yourself, groups of three, and uh, if someone's left out, then you can have groups of four. Okay, what I need you all to do is this. Okay? We, uh, we would like to gauge your level of, uh, of, of innovation or level of sleepiness. Okay? <laughs> we would like to see how awake are you or how innovative you are. Now, the problem is this. I'll give you a problem and then we'll see uh, which teams would like to present and then uh, we are, we'll share what our point of view of your answers are. Okay? Now, the thing is this. The question is this. Very, very simple. Huh? I have a factory, okay, I have a factory, and this factory, uh, what it does is that it processes bell peppers or capsicums, right? Um, now, in my factory floor, I have a lot of workers who manually uh, decor and remove the seeds from the bell peppers, okay? So what they do is that they, they take a knife and then after they cut it up and then remove the core manually. So is this a fast process or a slow process? Slow process, okay? Then after you might say, okay, let's hire more people. Then is it cheap or expensive? <laughs> expensive, okay, so how? Then I say, okay, let's punish them. You know, give them quota, you must meet this uh, or not, uh, or not you, you have a pay reduction. Uh, so will your workers be happy or sad? Sad, okay, so how then can you suggest a solution that will help me to remove the cores and the seeds from these bell peppers in a most efficient way, okay? It's totally up to you. You can make your own assumptions. This is an open problem. You can make your own assumptions on the situation you know, uh, and also any solutions that you can think of. Okay? You have the full authority. You are the manager now okay, of the bell pepper plant. I give you full authority. Okay? So work among your teammates. Okay? Uh, yeah, if you are not sure uh, who's sitting next to you, just say, hi, hello, my name is, and your name is. Yeah, and then we'll kick. And, and then we'll start. Okay, so I'll give you 10 minutes. The time now is 10.40, and then uh, we'll stop at 10.50, and then we'll see any teams would like to share or not their idea. Okay, thanks. Any team would like to share or not? Come up stage and share. Any team? Anyone? 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 Anybody? Okay, come, come. Oh, just to make it easier, I just pass you the mic. Yeah. yeah. I just share it. Can anyone see me here? Yeah, so. <laughs> right, uh, I just grabbed a, another opportunity to speak in front. So, right, uh, my idea is actually to make this whole process mechanical because it's repetitive and it's boring, am I right? So, yes, yes, yes. Basically, uh, my idea is. We discussed this now with my team is we divided it into few steps. Okay, maybe make it three steps. Let's say example like one person pick up the choose the best bell pepper, another person is actually go and cut it, another person just remove the bowl. So by practicing the same steps more and more and then they will actually become more efficient and also more effective. So that's the whole idea. So anyone have the similar ideas? Can I see a show of hands? Yeah, more, I think most. I think, yeah, I, I actually overheard some also have the same idea. So <laughs> just two? All right, yeah, that's all. Okay. Right, bye. Thank thanks, you. thanks, thanks. Oh, yeah. How many of you in the team? Uh, the three. Okay, I'll give you some breakfast over here. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is a, uh, yeah, uh, this Kit Kat, but green colored Kit Kat. Uh, green tea Kit Kat, so it's healthy, okay? Justifiable, <laughs> okay? Okay, uh, don't eat it yet, nah, because I don't think we're allowed to eat here. But, Eng Hu has uh, shared, he said that he'll give special prize for those who collect 10 Kit Kats, you'll be getting another prize. A surprise. <laughs> okay, the prize is this, yeah, Eng Hu is waving it over here. 
Uh, we like reading things, huh? so over here we have 150 open problems, okay? So uh, trees is what we are trying to teach, not just in the industries, but we are going upstream, we are going to the schools as well. Not just the universities, but also the high schools and also primary schools. And this is what children would love, okay? So the key thing is this, um, now a lot of companies, when they hire fresh grads, they realise that, hey, you know, Hey, this class, these two students are first class honours. Huh? Why, why, when they join the company, they don't know how to solve problems. Huh? What happened? And you know, some of you might have heard this before that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in your degree, you will only use less than 10% of your knowledge learnt in university, in the workplace. So many times you've heard of such thing, right? So isn't it such a waste? Okay. So these companies, what they have done is this. These are Malaysian companies. Huh? They, they were trying to find the root cause. Why are these fresh graduates who are brilliant in their exams do not do well, why, do, why don't they do well in the real working world? So they identified and they realized that it's actually because from young, they are trained to solve close problems. So we are very good with exam-based questions, right? We're very good, you know, one plus one is two, you know, cannot be one plus one is apple, no such thing. Well, why not? Why not? Okay, so the thing is that um, we have this book over here, it's uh, every single page over here, uh, color printed, you see, as I fan it over here. Jing. Yeah, so uh, this book is actually 100 ringgit per copy, but we'll give to whoever that collects 10 chocolates. Yeah, we'll give. Okay, the first, the first three lah, because we only got three. <laughs> okay, so yeah. All right, so let's go back to what we were doing. Wait, take my chocolate. Uh, okay, now. Now, as uh, the team mentioned just now, okay, they presented that a lot of mechanical um, solutions. Uh, as I go about as well, I realize that yes, um, this is how you all think because we, we see that a lot of industrial experts also, your expertise is in machineries, okay? And then um, a lot of the solutions that was proposed is about using a cutter, all right? Be it one blade or multiple blade, right? Correct? Or puncture, correct? So that's a lot of. Uh, uh, ideas which are similar to the previous process, which is, is about cutting. Okay, but can we think of another way that will make it uh, easier? Yes. Oh, you. Okay. What's what's your other way? Good. Oh, this one one chocolate already. Good morning, everyone. And as I discussed with my group member, and we come up with a new solutions is which is to educate our customer to eat the seed as well. The first, you see the, uh, the problem is, as long as we can provide a specific data or uh, a kind of report for them that saying that it's very nutritious and very uh, healthy, some sort like this, then they will confirm we'll eat one. Alright? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we can save a lot of labor costs. Okay, thanks. How many of you? Five. Okay, okay, four. Wait, I have one more. Thank you. Wow, five people. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, no, close it, close it, close it, close, 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 close. Close it. Okay, now, um, five years of doing this. Uh, every time, yeah, I'm, every time I'm surprised with such answers. This is the first time hearing such answers in five years. Very, very creative indeed. Uh, a clap again for, for that team. Um, Interesting. So in other words, now you're selling more. You sell the core as well, so then you can charge more per kilogram. Oh, oh, very business-minded from school of business. Uh. Uh, <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> no wonder. Okay, the thing is this. Um, let's see uh, if we can solve this um, without even needing uh, to have to re-educate the market because it will take a long time or short time. Long time, right? So let's look at a way to solve this. Okay. Now, the solution that's in the industry is this. Instead of cutting, why don't use pressure? Why don't use pressure? Now, the patent uh, that was filed for this to solve this problem is, is as such. What you do is that you have all of these bell peppers, right? You put them into a pressure valve, uh, into a pressure uh, container, into a pressure container. What you do is you close the lid, and then after you increase the pressure within that chamber, okay? And then what you do is that you, you release the pressure suddenly. Okay, so what will happen is this, as you increase the pressure uh, within the chamber, the pressure within the bell peppers also increase. Okay, so but when you open up the lid, you know, instantly, what happens is that there's a change of pressure. So the internal pressure of the bell pepper is higher than the external pressure 
I see some question marks already. So in other words, you are trying to explode <laughs> the bell peppers. So what happens is that when you open up the lid, the pressure would push the bell peppers apart and you have the core and the, the seeds all fall apart. So you just need to sieve them. So just with a click of button, increase the pressure, another click, release the pressure, and then all of your bell peppers are opened up already. Problem solved. Okay, problem solved. Oh, new physics. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So later on, I'll show as well. Trees originated from engineering. Yeah, when we, when we give such talks, right, to, to different companies, we realize that the top management, um, they're interested in implying trees, not in their manufacturing lineup, in solving HR problem, in solving uh, sales problem. Yeah, so later on, I'll show some examples on how we can apply that, that you know, in that situation. Okay, now let's look at another problem. Uh, we have cedar nuts. How can we efficiently open this? The shell, all right? open up the shell to get the nuts. Okay, originally it's manually, right? You need to manually pick it up. So how how can we solve this problem? We just use the previous solution. Again, put it in the pressure cooker, and then open it up. But if you're using relying on the pressure of air, it's not strong enough. So what they do is that they put some oil, and the pressure is high. Okay, let's. This is also food industry, right? Food processing industry. Let's look at another industry, diamonds. Okay, diamonds are a girl's best friend, a guy's worst enemy, you know, the wallet go <laughs> dieting. Okay, so the thing is this, um, now the diamond that, that you've, you see right, uh, on the finger of your beloved, right, it doesn't appear as such, it's not cut in such a way in nature. Okay, in nature, if you, the miners, right, the diamond miners, when they mine all of these uh, raw diamonds, it's all mixed up together with the rocks and sediments and whatnot. So their job is to remove to chisel away all of these sediments, uh, all of these uh, rocks and whatnot, impurities that surrounding this um, diamond. But they have to do it carefully, okay? Or not, you would chip off the valuable diamond, okay? So how can we solve this problem? Let's use the same solution. Instead of manually cutting, let's use pressure, okay? So what they do is that instead of just relying on pressure and air, they use water, okay? So you get higher pressure again. So you put this whole block of, uh, of a mixture of diamond and rock, you put it into the pressure chamber. Again, same process, what you have, you have the diamond separated from the rock. Because in between there's some air gaps, right? So that's where you want to make use of that difference of pressure to split it open, okay? Now the thing is this, different type of food, different type of industry use the same principle. Let's look at the year that, years that it has been patented. For the bell pepper, that solution was patented in 1945. Okay, for the cedar nut, it took them how long? Took them five years to follow suit. Okay, so for five years, all the the factory workers were you know were sacrificing their nails, opening up the nuts. Okay, five years wasted. Let's look at the diamond industry. Almost thirty years wasted. Yeah, they've been manually cheesing away the diamond, uh, chiseling away the diamond. But how much time has been lost? So the thing is this: we want to expedite the innovation process. Let's look. Let's look at the principles being used and let's apply it in our area of work, be it HR, be it management, be it in engineering. Let's try, why not? So the pattern is this. You increase the pressure, make use of the pressure, yeah, slowly increase the pressure and suddenly release it. Okay, that's the concept. So why trees? It is a structured system versus a trial and error system. It's not a hit and miss. Now the guy in the picture, or depicted in the picture over there, yeah, without him, we won't have this electric, working electric light bulbs. He's Thomas Edison, yeah? Now, when he and his team did countless experiments to come up with the first working light bulb, they spent a lot of resources. In today's terms of money, in, in equivalent to today money, this is one of the many projects he did. Huh? This project alone took up 14 million US dollars in today's value of money. You're not sure whether you make it or not, but you spent 14 million US dollars. So do we have the resources to do such experiments, to do such R&D type of work? No, we do not have. We need to run fast yeah, as a developing nation. So why not use a proven formula? So he said that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. So it's all about trying error. It's all about you know, just trying out and you know, it's all about hard work. Yeah, of course that's true. But we are here to just suggest to you, can we increase the inspiration from 1% to perhaps 2%? Then you have, you have doubled up already. Yeah, and perhaps you can cut down your level of perspiration as well. Okay, so why not? Now, 
you would have um, learnt about left brain and right brain, one being logical, one being the creative side. Now with trees, it's not just fun and games. It's also based on logic and data. So it's the usage of your entire brain. Okay? And we believe that it can be taught, just like music. You know, uh, no one, of course, there are some child prodigies. But if you want to learn to play the piano, all right, you have to train. Okay? So same as this, we believe that we can train you up to increase your level of creativity. So when we talk about problem solving, these are the, the, the key issues that we face. Psychological inertia, lack of knowledge, as your friend pointed out. Hey, this one, you know, for those with physics knowledge, they would know how to solve the bell pepper problem. But what if I don't have that specific knowledge? Then it's a bit hard, correct? Uh, wrong objective. Yeah, some would say that, hey, you know, I'm actually removing the core, or am I removing the seat? Which objective are we trying to do? Yeah, uh, promotes compromise. Let's say, okay, um, for example, let's let's use machineries, but it's going to be expensive. So there's a contradiction. Yeah, or it's going to be using up. Uh, more energy. Okay, uh, let's look. Another um, problem with uh, with people having difficulties in solving problems is that they do not know the root cause. Okay, now a lot of factors, but let's focus on one, which is psychological inertia. Now, actually, just now when I mentioned about the bell pepper, where people use knife and cut it open, right? The psychological inertia happens when you hear the word cut and knife. So when I mention about cutting and knife, you think about okay. Let's think about machineries then, cutting, you know. So it sort of box up your thinking, okay. So the key thing is that how can we break psychological inertia? Psychological inertia is actually the resistance to change your state of mind, okay. So most things have uh, inertia. For example, this uh, rostrum over here, I try to push it this side. It's resisting my motion because it has inertia and also friction, but also it has inertia, right. So same as thinking process as well, right. So when someone tries to introduce something new to you, you might, you know, you might be on the defensive side first. Okay? Or in fact, the other way around, you might champion something that is uh, not the right way, which is like using knives and about cutting. Yeah? So we try to break that. So, but it's very hard. Okay? So this is a thought experiment by Professor George Lakoff, and he said that you know, he ran this thought experiment. If you tell people not to think about something, they'll think more about that, that thing. It's like when you tell your students, okay, everyone keep quiet, then they'll even make more noise. Everyone do not do this. And the next thing you see is them doing that, right? Um, so the key thing is this, how can we remove the pink elephant from our mind, okay? What do you see over here? This picture, anybody? A duck, a, duck. a rabbit, okay? Uh, uh, anyone saw the rabbit? Yeah, I can see, huh? this is the, the ears of the rabbit. Anyone see the duck? This is the beak of the duck. Okay, so different angles. Next. Uh, what do you see over here? What's this uh, animal over here? It can be a goat or a kanchil, a deer. How about this over here? What's this? What's this? Elephant, okay, and the last one? Giraffe. Okay, uh, anyone else saw the penguin? Yes. Let's flip it the other way around. <laughs> okay, so you flip it the other way around, the elephant, if you were to view it the other way around, it's actually a peacock. And then the, the giraffe over here, if you flip it around, it becomes the penguin. And then after that, the deer over here, you flip it around, it becomes the seal. All right, so in every problem or so, we try to, to help you consider why don't look at it in another perspective? Okay. So how does trace work? Again, it's all about this. Generalizing your problem, make it into an abstract, and then it proposes a general solution. Why we need to generalize is so that you won't have psychological inertia. It's so that we break the psychological inertia. Okay. Now, uh, when Magic organized this talk, they said that, oh, you know, you must you must let the, the participants feel empowered. They must take away something. Okay? So these are the sum of the tools. Okay? The first tool is this, contradiction. Yeah? This is about finding the right problem to solve. Finding the right problem to solve. What is contradiction in the first place? Um, is a zebra an animal with black stripes and a white body? Or is it a, uh, it has a black body with white stripes? Yeah? Which way? Okay? So contradiction is this. It is the opposing point, all right? 
is an opposing point. What we have are three types of contradiction. Okay? In trees, we mainly try to solve problems which have contradictions. Because problems that do not have contradiction um, are, not, are, not, are not critical enough to solve. Okay? It's all about applying the solutions, that's all. That's not what we are trying to do. Okay? For example, it's like studying. You know, how can we, can we get good results? If it's all about studying hard, then just do it. Okay? Now, the first type of contradiction we'll touch on is this. It's technical contradiction. Okay? It's like a seesaw. Yeah? When you try to improve a certain parameter, and when you realize that something else gets worse, okay? you improve one parameter, something else gets worse, and that's a, that is what we call a technical contradiction. Okay? And then vice versa. If you try to improve that, um, that parameter, something else gets uh, worse again. Yeah. So it's like a push and pull, a seesaw. So these are the problems that we try to solve. We are not looking at compromise. Some people might say, okay, let's look at the optimum level. Optimum level. No, we are about removing the contradiction. Next time, a contradiction, which is a little bit difficult to, to, to solve, is physical contradiction. That is when you need a parameter and you don't need it as well. You need the opposite of that parameter. An example is this. It's like a bicycle chain. Now, the bicycle, when it was first invented, it did not come with a bicycle chain. It did not come with a chain. It was direct drive. You have to drive on the axles. Yeah? It was direct drive. So why didn't the person, the inventor of the bicycle, come up with the chain as well? It's because they could not solve this physical contradiction. They need a chain that is flexible, but also rigid at the same time. So how can you be flexible, but not flexible at the same time? That is the contradiction. But if you look at the bicycle chain, it's made out of sprockets. Okay? So as a system level, as if you look at the entire chain, it's flexible. Correct? But if you look at the subsystem level, let's look at the components, the sprockets. Is it flexible? No. The individual sprockets are not flexible. So they manage to meet two criteria. Flexible on the system level and rigid on the subsystem level. Problem solved. Okay. Another type of contradiction is administrative contradiction. That is where needs conflicts or contradicts with abilities. So just now about the bell pepper solution, right? Um, about uh, using pressure, change of pressure. Let's, uh, uh, let's use pressure to, to solve it. But let's say if you do not have the technology or you do not have the expertise or you do not have the budget. So that is considered as an administrative contradiction. So nice idea, but KIV, okay? Let's KIV first. So that's another type of contradiction, okay? Now for technical contradiction, it's like this, okay? And just an example. If you want to, to get to your destination very fast, okay? Um, you need to, to press, on, press on your accelerator and your car will go uh, accelerate faster, okay? And now, traveling sh time shortens, but you will use up more fuel, okay? So that's a contradiction there, okay? Now, I'll show you a real case study, okay? On a sun lotion. Um, now, this company came up with an innovative solution. Uh, for those who do sunbathing, I think most of us here know, uh, we hide from the sun, right? We hide from the sun. Uh, but, but for those who, who wants to be an amor, uh, what you do is that you, you go to the beach and then after you want to sunbathe. But at the same time, you realize those who go for sunbathing, they also apply uh, sun lotion, correct? Because you want to block out the harmful UV rays, right? From damaging your skin. So the thing is this, over a period of time of sunbathing, you realize that uh, they would need to apply another layer of uh, sunblock, correct? So why is it so? Because the previous one have worn out already. The effect has taken place already. So you need to reapply again. So why don't then apply a thick layer, right? A thicker layer, one shot, then you no need to reapply your lotion over and over again. The key thing is this, they do not know how. Okay. So a company came up with a solution, okay? And they figure out, okay, let's came, come up with a sun lotion that is smart, okay? So in your sun lotion, uh, actually the active ingredient is, is a, a very small amount in that sun lotion. Most of it are just um, neutral elements, okay? The cream and whatnot. But the active agent, the sun blocking agent, uh, it's very minute in quantity, all right? So the key thing is this. What they come up with is they figure out, okay, we need to store all of these active agents into a container. Okay, into a container, and let's say if the sun ray is very strong on that day, what will happen is this container would degrade. Okay, the UV ray would degrade the capsule, and the capsule would release more of this UV uh, protecting agent. 
Okay, so it's like an automated uh, solution. Okay, so more UV ray comes in, more of these capsules get broken, and then um, it would spread out more of this protective agent. Now, of course, these capsules are not like your tablet form where you, you take in. Okay, these are very, very small capsules, and these are known as micro capsules. Okay. So to innovate it a step further, instead of using these very uh, microscopic uh, scale uh, capsules, they take it a step further. They use micro sponges, okay? so that it's easier to degrade and to release. Yeah, so your sponge, right? imagine if you soak it up, soak up with water, okay? it's filled up right? with the solution. And then if you so uh, to squeeze it, all the solution would come out. So what happens is this. The sun ray would degrade the sponge and then the sponge would release the agent. So if it's a stronger sun on that day, more of these agents will be released. So problem solved. Okay. So that company is Christian Dior. Uh, Christian Dior also used trees. Huh? What do you see over here? Uh, not your era, uh, this cartoon. Okay. Not my era, so I'm very young actually. Okay. <laughs> it's Wallace and Gromit. Okay. Uh, but what else do you see? Uh, we, we talk about psychological inertia, right? Let's see. I'll give one chocolate. Uh, uh, I know why it's quiet already because no chocolate. Okay. Only one person to put their hands up and, and shout out your answer. One person. Also don't have it. Anyone? 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 Okay. I'll make it easier. Next clue. What else do you see? Do you see something? Anybody? Want to raise your hand and, and then answer? Oh. Yes, correct. Google. Okay, thanks. Right. Okay, give a hand to her. Okay, she she spotted very fast. What? Google? Google? Is this Google as well? Is this Google as well? Do you see the G? The O O G L E. Now you see it, right? After she mentioned Google. Yes. The colors make sense as well. The colors make sense. And how about this one? Uh, can you see it now? Yeah. Good, very good. No psychological inertia in this one. Now, next two is the 14 inventive principle. Um, trees, uh, the, the most favorite tool in trees is actually, actually the 14 inventive principle. And there's a lot of misconception thinking that, oh, the 14 inventive principle is it's, uh, it's representative of trees only. No, no. We have dozens of tools. This is the most popular one. Okay? Now, when I mentioned uh, that Al Schuller um, identified certain patterns, right, that, that all of these patterns follow certain principles, these are the the principles. Now, these are the 40 inventive principles. So by using the, all of these, you need not depend on trial and error so much. Yes, you still need to try these 40 inventive principles, but at least there's a guideline over there. And uh, good news, uh, Eng Hu has uh, printed for you guys the list of these 14 principles. So you can take home okay, with you and can keep it in your wallet so that you can read it anytime. Okay, uh, but of course, exam time. I don't think this is can lah. Yeah. Shouldn't uh. Okay, so now let's look at one of the principles. Yeah, uh, look, uh, let's look at the problems first. Um, all these forty inventive principles are like alphabets. Okay, how many alphabets do we have? A to Z, twenty six. Okay, so alphabets are used to form words. Words are used to form sentences. Sentences are used to form phrases. Phrases are used to form paragraphs, paragraphs, essay, and so on and so forth. Okay? So the building block of uh, literature, or English in particular, is these uh, alphabets. Right? But how about creativity? As I mentioned, up to today, 3 million patents have been studied. The 41st principle, the 41st letter, has not been found yet. So in other words, you, need, you just need to rearrange or combine all of these principles into your product, into your service into your competition, yeah? And see, where do you go from there? Now, let's start off with this, uh, with this problem. Um, organ donation. Um, now, in Malaysia, do we have a lot of organ donors or not so many organ donors? Not so many, right? Uh, because of multiple reasons and whatnot. But let's say you are the president, okay? You are the president of a fictitious um, uh, country. Let's call it magic, okay, magic land, all right? Since we're in magic. So let's say you are the president and you have absolute power and authority to do whatever you can to increase the number of organ donors. What would you do? Okay, what would you do? Uh, this one individual, huh? this one individual. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take about two minutes. 
or three minutes. Okay. Okay, two or three minutes to to just think about it. And uh, but anyone has a solution ready? You want to share? Then just raise your hand, and we'll give the chocolate. Anyone? Or you know the solution already? Or want to try? You have absolute power. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Anybody? Okay, then this chocolate is mine, since I'll answer it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Huh? So it's a bit tough, right? Uh, those who like objective, uh, subjective question, a bit tough, right? Because you do not know, you do not have any um, tools. Let's give you some hint. Let's use principle number 13. Uh, oh yeah, all the principles are number coded, it's 1 to 40. So we, when we talk about principle 13, it's always about the other way around. So what does this mean? It means do the opposite. Okay, do the opposite. Okay, this is the hint. Now, if you want to sign up to be an organ donor, you need to fill up a form, correct? What's the opposite of that, of signing up? What's the opposite of signing up? Correct, sort of. okay, uh, one chocolate for you later, take, okay, correct. So, now, she said automated, uh, automated uh, registration. But then, you still want to give the freedom to, to the citizens of Magic Land, right, to decide. So, correct, correct, well done, well done. So, the, she mentioned the solution already. So, instead of signing up to be an organ donor, now you sign out to opt out from being an organ donor. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so this is using this principle, the other way around. Um, now, Germany and Austria, neighboring countries, similar culture, Similar geographical location. One has the opt in option, like Malaysia, sign up to be an organ donor. One has the opt out option. Okay? Austria is the opt out option. Germany is the opt in option. 14% of the population in Germany are organ donors. Compared to Austria, 99.8% organ donors. See, just with a switch of policy, okay? you have increased the number of organ donors. Now, actually, we don't mind to be organ donors, all right? But it's just that we are too busy. Even Saturday, we also have to get up and then come for this class, <laughs> right? We're so busy, all right? So it's not that people are mean. It's just that you know they, they don't have the initiative to, to take the hassle to sign up a form. Now let's take a closer look back to home. Singapore has the opt-up option. Once you reach 21 years old, you are automatically an organ donor. They will send you a nice letter describing to you, okay, what will happen, you know, once you passed on, <laughs> you know, you contribute towards society directly. And um, so, but you have, they also give you a form, okay? They will give you a form to opt out, okay? So that you still have the freedom of choice, okay? So problem solved. Let's look at another problem, okay? Um, this is the International Space Station. It's powered up using solar panels. And uh, NASA, NASA uses trees as well, right? The most... A technologically advanced uh, institution, right? A group of people who are so advanced in technology. They use trees as well, okay? As part of their tools. So the problem they have is this. Um, in sending up the solar panels up to space, they realize, you know, after sending up all the way to space, and when the astronauts are about to install the solar panels, they realize that the solar panels have some defects. There are some cracks and scratches. And then they, were, they did root cause analysis and then they were trying to find out, okay, what's the cause of these scratches and cracks? They found out it's because on Earth, okay, during assembly, the technicians and engineers, uh, they tend to drop their tools, okay? And then there are some scratches and dents, okay? So why is it important not to have any scratches? Because in space, is it hot or cold? In outer space, it's hot and cold. So there'll be fluctuation of temperature. So for example, if you have a crack mug, the failure would start from the crack. So therefore, for solar panels, you must not have any scratches, must not have any cracks, okay? So it's very, very critical. So one of the steps was to, to use a HR solution, okay? Let's identify the culprit, okay? And let's try to penalize them, but did it work? No, because it's pure human error, all right? It's not that they want to drop it, it's just that it so happens to, to drop, okay? Now, so one of the solution was very simple, yeah? It was using this, Principle, the other way around. Okay, same principle. Can anyone uh, think of a solution? Another chocolate. The other way around. The other way around. Anyone? 
Yes, spot on. Okay, okay, okay. You got chocolate the next. Okay. Now, on Earth, okay, the, the usual process is this. Assembly process is this. You have it laid out flat, and then you work on the, SM, on the solar panels. Okay, so you tend to drop their tools because of gravity. Okay, so instead of laying out flat like this, why not do it the other way around? Suspend it upwards, you know? Just flip it around. So even if you drop the tool, it will drop on your face. And then you remember, okay, yes, okay, not to drop the tool really. Okay, uh, so you solve two problems. Huh? You come up with new habit, like, as the first team, pre, uh, the second team mentioned, habit. Okay, problem solve. Next industry, okay, chocolate. Ah. Um, so in this chocolate manufacturing plant, what we have is that we, we have very nice chocolates which have nice contents. Inside you will have syrup and whatnot, okay, and jam filling. So how do they put the jam inside? It's by having two shells of this chocolate and what they do is that they pour the syrup or the jam in, in one of the shell and then they close it up, okay? So, but syrup and jam, does it flow fast or slow? Slow, because it's very viscous, very sticky, right? So it flows very slowly. So how can you uh, increase production? Yeah, it's by the first step they thought about is by increasing the temperature of the jam or the syrup. But what happens to the chocolate then? Melts. So you see the contradiction over there? So what will you do? Yes. Put the chocolate in the what? Oh, as in like make it like a cup and then scoop it up, scoop the syrup. Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, oh, brilliant, yes. Yes, freeze the gem. Yeah, the answer is do it the other way around, okay? Freeze the gem. So now, instead of heating up your gem, you freeze it. And instead of having your, your chocolate shells as uh, solid, make it like a chocolate fountain. Okay, so what you need to do is that you need to have these uh, frozen syrup balls and then just glide it or just roll it over a chocolate fountain and then it will be coated with chocolate. So the other way around, problem solved. Okay, later take chocolate, uh, two of you. Huh? Okay. What principle does it use? The other way around as well. Okay, some of you might be frustrated. Oh, why, why, why? But we can see the rate of answering is faster, a little bit faster already. Okay. Now, what we have seen is this. With one principle, we can look at the applications in different angles. Okay, we split up using a spectrum. Uh, yeah, yeah. You use it, we split it up using a prism, that's our mind. And you will have spectrums of application, okay? So we have looked at it uh, just the other way around, that principle alone. Uh, you, we have seen it being used in product design, manufacturing process, social problem with the organ donation uh, case study, and also business, uh, business model, okay, this case study. Uh, now, another problem that I'd like to share is this. Uh, imagine if you have a strawberry farm, okay? Strawberry farm. The problem is this, is that you have a lot to harvest within a short period of time, okay? And you do not have enough workers. Okay, so what do you do? You don't have enough workers to harvest them, to send them to the town centers to sell them. So what do you do? Using the other way around. Anybody? Uh, business students, right? Uh, so, sorry. Yes. Ah, brilliant. So, so your friend mentioned that transfer the market instead in the town and into the orchard. So, but also let's take it a step further. Instead of you needing to hire people to pluck the strawberries, you open up your farm, okay? And get the people to pluck themselves. So it becomes like a fun activity and then you charge them. So it's brilliant. They travel all the way to your farm and then they have to do the work and they're paying you for it. <laughs> so problem solved, the other way around. Okay, again, uh, chocolate later. Okay, now when we talk about innovation, um, there are different levels, okay? And Alt Schuller has categorized them. How to identify which level are you at? Okay, these are the five levels. Uh, level one is when you use a solution within your own specific trade. For example, bell pepper, you just need to look at your competitors. Like one, the first team that presented, they said, oh, they overheard the other team also have a similar solution. So it's like within the trade, okay? So those are level one. Okay, not much, it's just iteration of ideas, existing ideas. The next stage is within industry, like the diamond industry, adopting the solutions from the bell pepper and the, the cedar nuts industry, those are level two, okay? Uh, 
no, within industry is between cedar nuts and the bell pepper. Those are food processing industry. For level three is when the diamond industry are using uh, the food processing industry solution. That's a higher level. And then we talk about new science. Okay, uh, instead of uh, using physics, you know, uh, we have instead of using mechanical ways, uh, because using the change of pressure is still a mechanical way, right? Um, some teams uh, have presented before. They have suggested let's genetically modify the bell peppers so that they do not produce any seeds. That's using another science, another level of innovation. Yeah, and um, surprisingly, you know who came up with those solutions? Those from the construction industry. Okay, when we run our workshops, yeah, those from the construction industry, they thought of that idea. Okay? And then uh, finally, um, a very, very minute amount, less than 1% of the patents are actually new discoveries, okay? totally new discoveries. So in trees, we focus in helping companies to increase their level of innovation from one to four. Okay? And our, uh, our strengths are between one to four. Okay? Not so much on five. Five is pure research work. Okay, pure research work. So trees, um, as the title of this talk is, it's, it's about the open secret of innovation uh, by Fox 500 companies. If you do a quick search in Google News, you will see uh, news articles uh, being published in these magazines, Business Week, Fortune, Forbes. Yeah, you will see especially companies such as Samsung. Okay, such as Samsung. They, they, are, they are the main drivers of, of trees at the moment in the world. Um, besides technological firms, um, high-tech firms, we also have other type of companies who have successfully used trees like P&G. Okay? So this is one of the most successful uh, startup brand by P&G. It's called the White Strips. The purpose of this, the function of this product is to whiten your teeth. Okay? Before this product, what we have is that we have um, teeth holders that looks uh, like mouth guards, okay? you need to put gel, line it up with gel, this whitening gel, and then you need to put it in your mouth. So it's like you have this mouth guard, it's intrusive, okay? it's not so comfortable. So they figure out, okay, why don't we develop a more convenient uh, solution? So they come up with films. Okay? Instead of having a mouth guard, it's like a film, like your selfie tape. Right? It's like a film, you just put it and it's transparent as well, so that people won't really notice it. So you just put one layer on your top row of teeth, another layer on your bottom row of teeth, and then, yeah, problem solved. This product, um, within the first year, it has garnered 130 million US dollars of sales. Just single product. And up to today, uh, year to year, they, this is the trough product from PNG that is within the billion dollar brand. Billion dollar brand. It has garnered more than a billion dollar sales. Just with this simple idea of using tin film. Okay? Now, Intel. Uh, 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 approaching to the year 2000, um, Intel came up with this st statement that trees is the innovative tool for the 21st century. They didn't, say, they didn't say that Intel is the innovative tool of the 21st century. They said trees. Yeah. So the works in Malaysia are started off by guys from Intel, actually. Uh, they started off with CSR uh, work, so they planted the seeds. And they're continuing to plant the seeds. Yeah? Because they have used it. Uh, back in Penang, you know, their manufacturing plant, they have successfully used trees to cut down costs and also to improve innovation. And then now they're sharing it with the university students and uh, also schools. Yeah. Samsung uh, has attributed uh, the, the key successes to trees. Now, they took the industry by surprise. Okay? What has happened is the approaching to year 2000, um, Samsung suddenly came up with a lot of patents. Yeah, so they exponentially produce patents. So what has happened is that the industry players they were identifying what was their secret. Secret is actually trees. What they did was that they hired uh, the trees masters and as consultants and trained them up uh, in trees. And up to today, it is compulsory for Samsung top management to go through level one trees training. It is compulsory. Yeah. So year in, year out, uh, under my trees, we do invite uh, the director of R&D, director of innovation, and speakers from General Electric as well, and other international companies, multinational companies who have used trees. You know, we do invite them to share their case study over here. Okay. And also, yeah, just to mention, we have our homegrown talent, uh, Dr. Zul. Yeah, soon to be Dr. Zul. Uh, Zul is representing Proton. Just give your hand to him. Thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> Yeah, perhaps the Q&A session if you have some question on how trees is being 
use in Malaysian uh, companies, he'll be the, the best man to, to answer that. Yeah? So Proton is using trees as well. Uh, the latest car model by Proton, what is it called? Iris. I-R-I-Z, ah, T-R-I-Z. Uh, now you know why. Okay. And then Isaac, you know, I-R-I-Z. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Ah, yeah. So it's, when we talk about innovation and uh, trying to help Malaysia as a developing nation, uh, hardware and software is not enough. You know, we're in cyber jail. You know, we got uh, the best talent pool and whatnot. You know, let's let's increase the mindware as well. Okay, we have we need to have this trinity of wares. Okay, the hardware, software, and mindware to make it work. Okay, so today I just sh shared very briefly three tools. Uh, in particular, you can remember one principle, which is the other way around. Okay, uh, we do have dozens of other tools as well. And uh, this is our uh, website, uh, www.mytrees.com.my. Do add the .my as well. And uh, what we do is that uh, we do talks like this and we also conduct workshops. And uh, we are trained and certified by this guy over here, Dr. Sergey Aikovenko. He's an adjunct professor from MIT and he's also a trees master. Okay, he's currently the pre president of the International Trees Association. And he's the lead trainer for companies such as PNG and Siemens and so on and so forth. Yeah, so he's the main guy, and uh, we do invite him once a while as well, every two years now to Malaysia to give talks. Yeah, so if you're interested to to sign up as member, it'll be great. Uh, no membership as now. Okay, we normally collect membership during our AGM, and I'm the treasurer, so yeah, it's not being done so well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, during AGM time, then I will transform to become an along. <laughs> to collect payment. But anyhow, if you're interested to know more newsletters and more um, uh, updates about our latest events, you can just go to our website and just sign up over there, okay? Uh, now, uh, we're here to promote, teach and apply. It's not just about teaching. We want you to succeed as well in applying it and making it successful in whatever application that you have. Uh, for those who are interested um, in going to the next level, just now as I'm walking around during the exercise, some have asked as well, how do we go? How do we start, okay? is this. Uh, we have different levels in trees. In total, uh, if we follow the international tree syllabus, we have five levels. Okay, Level one, two, three, four, five. In Malaysia, currently, we offer training up to level three. Okay, Level one, two, and three. So if you're interested to be a practitioner or even a trainer in trees, we do uh, provide assistance in helping you in that journey. So. Up to today, uh, we have trained up 5,689 level one uh, participants, and most of them, 3,000 plus, are actually from the institution of higher learning, uh, the lecturers from universities. The key aim is this. When my tree started off, there were some strategies. The first strategy is this, okay? Since the market is demanding for problem solvers, let's train up the lecturers, because they will train up the fresh grads, correct? So let's start with the lecturers. And then the next phase, we moved on to training up the industry because we want to help especially Malaysian companies. Why not go to the global stage? Okay. Next stage, we're going upstream. We're going to the schools as well. As I mentioned with the book, The 150 Problems, uh, we're going to schools. Uh, we're training up the teachers. We're training up uh, the people who are in charge of the syllabus in the Ministry of Education as well. So we are going towards that phase as well. Okay. Um, now, uh, these are some of the dates. You might want to snap a picture. Um, it is very rare. We only do it open classes. These are public classes. It's only open once every quarter. We usually run in-house classes. Okay. So, for example, if Proton wants to have a workshop, we normally do it just for them, the Proton guys. So, only once a quarter we have. These are some of the dates. Uh, some have asked also about the 27, 28 April. If you want, maybe one or two slots left. Yeah, not much. So, you might need to join the next class then. Even then, once we open up for the next class, normally it gets snapped up quite fast. Yeah, um, I think the record was with the level three class within one hour, was it? Yeah, uh, we we have uh, 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 we have seen that when the level three class was open, open up within one hour, it was all snapped up. Seventy to eighty places was snapped up. These are some of the companies and affiliations that we have in Malaysia. Yeah, some are uni universities. We have um, a list of 40 plus already, private and public. We are going private and public. And then in local companies, these are just some, okay? And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, Proton, yeah. Zul is here. So um, 
I'll end and conclude with these words from Altshuler, father of trees. He said that you may wait for 100 years for enlightenment to solve your problem, or you can solve it with, in 15 minutes using these principles. Okay? So why waste time? Okay? Why waste time? Why rely on trial and error? Okay? Now, yeah, so I'll open up the applause now to question and answer. Okay, you can ask any question or you can give me answers. Though. I also need answers. Yeah, so I don't, do any one of you? Have any questions? Uh, and the trees team uh, can are here to to facilitate your question. Anybody? Anybody? No. Okay. Now, uh, whatever shape you are, whatever shape you are, okay, be it you are square. This suits you because it, innovation then is not something very fuzzy. There's concrete steps towards it. If you are a triangle, yeah, take lead yeah, in introducing it to whatever institution that you have. If you are a uh, circle, this involves problem solving for the entire team. You do not just need to rely on one genius in your team. Everyone gets to contribute. If you are uh, rectangular, this is the next trend. We see it being picked up in the industries. So, and if you are a squiggly line, uh, just, just do it. Uh, think later. <laughs> okay. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time.